Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm so excited because we have a very special guest today. It is Sean Robinson, and he is one of our team members. He is a podcast host on our sh on our uh, show. He has his own podcast that you'll see when you come on, and he's here today because he wants to talk about goal setting and some other ideas that he has that's going to help you benefit because now it's January, it's the new year, time to set goals, time to think about what we want in the future. And he's going to show you how to do all this and actually accomplish what you want to do. So I'm very excited to begin uh, talking to um, to Sean and see what he has to say. But before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out. We have the Happy Wellness Expo and they have top quality products and services that they'll be showing at their expo. They have over a hundred exhibitors, uh, both local and uh, nationwide that are coming into this um, expo. And so if uh, during in the uh, description box, we're going to have all the information about the Happy Wellness Expo and where you can uh, get information on where to go and how to become a part of it or even just visit and see what they have. It's going to be on Saturday, March 23rd at 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So check out the information and I'm sure you won't be disappointed. So Sean, tell me your ideas because this is really exciting because, you know, I am one person, I'll tell you, when it comes to, I always set resolutions. I mean, I really am serious about them, but I can't tell you, I'll be honest, you know, I, I tend to break a lot of the resolutions as much, much as I really want to keep them. I tend to see myself falling back sometimes, you know, I, I do good with some things and then some things I see myself slip and go back to those old habits. And then I got to try to get myself out of it again. But, you know, what's your, what's your, your ideas of how we can be more productive and how we can be focused and actually make those resolutions a part of our life and, and improve our overall self? Well, uh, first, thanks, Stacey, for having me back. Uh, I always like talking to you about this, this stuff. And uh, basically this uh, resolutions for me, like anybody, it was a trial and error thing. Um, it, it, there's a lot of pressure. Uh, there was a lot of times I, I, I wasn't successful and I let uh, myself go back to old routines because I'd set lofty, ma uh, massive goals to be like, I'm going to lose this hundred pounds or I'm going to change this complete mindset or whatever I was working on. It was just way too much for the pressure of January you know, you get through Christmas season and all those things and whatever that means to, to you. But it's like you get through all that and now you're going to change everything about you or a person or uh, the kind of things you're into. So we're getting to the point the end of January as we record this. And there's already so many people, including who I used to be uh, in every uh, resolution I tried. Uh, we've let, we've let go. We've gone back. And and I think it's it's a great time to just revisit what we've set for ourselves and maybe if we aren't successful let's just look at refocusing what we what we were trying to do because there's still a lot of the year left and this still, still can be a very productive uh year for your personal growth yeah you know the year has just begun it's january you know when i think of january even though we're where today is the last day of january think of it as a new beginning it's like a butterfly because really we just started the year you know yes a month has gone by but it, we're just in the beginning of this whole entire year anything could be possible now when you want to change and you want to focus and you know you were saying how you think goal setting is really important like what's your your views on on you know breaking out of those bad habits and focusing on really creating good goals that are attainable and sticking with it like what suggestions do you have for the listeners i think the, the important thing is just you, we've got to determine what where we where we want to go and any trip that you're going to go on if we're thinking about driving traveling you know where you're headed you, right. you may have to detour here and there and there will be different things that come up but but you have an idea where you're going so just like any goals, we just, we need to make sure we know where we're going. Um, and when we set that direction, we need to plan it out. So if we don't know where we're going, if we don't come up with that plan, if we don't set that goal, we're just driving around. Right. We're not heading anywhere. Yeah. You know, we're, we're taking each day as it passes, month as it passes and years and, and time flies so fast. We wonder what happened, but setting those goals coming up with some version and it doesn't have to be big and we can talk about breaking it down but coming up with goals and giving ourselves some direction and making that work with our daily lives and the, the commitments we have and all the things that we have to do 
you know, we can make these goals work with our daily life. And that's how we are successful is, is blending uh, the two together. Now, when you do the, when you create short-term goals and long-term goals, do you like to like write it down? Do you set a notebook? Some people like to do like a, like a graph, like they put like a circle on the top and then they branch out. And, you know, some people just sort of like to write short-term goals and maybe give themselves five or 10 of them and then long-term goals. And then you got those people who want to really give themselves a constructive look because they're more detailed and they might do, okay. Three months from now, I want to be here. Three months from now, from there, you know, in the six months trajectory, I want to be here. And nine months, I want to be here. And and by the end of the year, I want to accomplish X, Y, and Z. And I want to be da 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 da. So, like, what do you find the most productive? Because you've been doing this for a long time, and with your own based experience and knowledge, and working with clients and stuff, what do you find is the most, you know, productive way to attain? short-term goals and long-term goals? Um, I think the first part is everyone's different. We're all different. So what works for me, what works for you, what works for the next person, it's got to be a blend of all the things we pick up on and what makes sense for where we're at. So for me, I've tried a lot of things. I've tried setting small goals, big goals, um, all the things you mentioned. Um, The things that work for me, I've used vision boards a lot and Mm -hmm. it's not, I don't use it in a way that's like scrapbooking and, and that's, something people do and it's very powerful um, manifesting and scrapbooking and and seeing those things you want. Yeah. Um, I have a a whiteboard that I put uh, in uh, my cupboard where I keep, um, you know, things I'm in this cupboard all the time. And basically when I look at this whiteboard, I've got my, my goals set out there. I've got different things noted on there, different pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, It's a magnet whiteboard. So there's pictures there there's different things that i see every day that remind me of of this path that i'm on of the goals that i have so the vision board has worked for me and and um added to that i i've journaled uh journaling has been been a massive thing for me but not something that has been a daily weekly thing it's more a a place for me to reflect when i need to if something's happened i don't want to forget if if something happened that made me feel a certain way uh, i've set these goals i've wanted to track and update journaling when when i need to has been powerful and just keeping track in a notes app on my phone has been a massive thing for me too, because yes, it's not structured. So I've titled it, um, whatever notes. And then in there I can go in and just add thoughts. I can add dates. I can add different little goals and things. So I don't want to forget. So, you know, as, as all these things are available, we just have to make sure we're using them to, to the place that we are in our life. And, and, um, there's a lot of stuff I tried that, that didn't work. Right. Um, and, and just to think of, a of an example is, is like that daily journal, you know, getting up every single day and the morning routine is, is powerful and part of something that uh, you should work towards. We can touch on that, but to, to get up every single day and write in that journal, my thoughts every day, it was not something that I found useful for me at this point in my life and where I've come from, because I just didn't need it that often. So Right. I, I wouldn't rule it out if that's where someone wants to go, but just know that, you know, it may not feel right and you just need to make it where it works for you. Right. Exactly. I agree with you. You know, everyone is, everyone is different and, you know, it, it depends what really works for you and, you know, and, and some people even, you know, will, you know, either listen to music in the morning or meditate and clear their mind. And then a lot of people will say that, thoughts kind of rush through their head and then they'll write down those thoughts and, you know, and then they'll get an idea how they're feeling for the day. And it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Like, you know, and then it'll give them insight of who they are and then they start branching. And, and like we were talking about, like they kind of branch off into these different areas of life and stuff. And it, and it's pretty cool, you know, but it's, it really, it is what, what, what works for you. And I know before we were talking, um, before we started recording, you had mentioned something I thought was really true and really interesting is that all this stuff takes time, goal setting, accomplishing those goals because they're baby steps. You know, you can't just go from A to Z. There's no way it's just unrealistic. 
And so that's why you create short-term goals and long-term goals. So you, you can accomplish those short-term goals and they'll lead you to the long-term goals. But you were touching base on how we've become such a society that wants instant reaction, instant satisfaction and gratification. And, you know, that's why reels do so well. That's why shorts do really well. People just want results and they don't want to do the work. And explain to the people, because you had some really good insight on this, why we have to kind of change our outlook. Yes, we are a society that does it, that is impatient, but why it's so important if you really want to accomplish your goals, meet your resolutions, why is it so important to not be so impatient and to do the baby steps? Um, well, add to that, everything that we do is is fast. Life is fast. Everything you're in a drive through through uh, fast food or your your anything you're working on, um, internet, it's got to be immediate. And we start to expect that in everything. You set a goal, it's it's a lot of commitment, whatever that goal is to stick to it. So uh, one way I found I found success and I actually to back up about the resolution, I think when we set our goal in January, in the back of our mind, we feel like it has to be done this year. Yeah. We have to set that goal and it has to be done this year. So when we are working through that and we are now at the end of January, that's a month gone. If we haven't done anything, winter blues or whatever January might mean to you, it's a month gone. That's enough time for some people to say, oh, I missed it. I'll yeah. try it again later. Or, and then I'll start Monday and Monday becomes, I'll do it after this holiday or uh, it's my birthday. I'll do it after that. Like it, we just constantly push it off, push it off. And then we're back to the next December and wondering what happened to the year and I'll do it again next year. Right. But, but to back up, we don't have to do these things in a calendar year. We start in January. If that's our start, we have to keep in our mind that whatever it is we're working on, if we want to lose weight, if we want to do say uh, whatever thing we want to use late, we lose weight. If 20 pounds is our mark, that doesn't mean we have to do it this year. Yes, we want it done immediately because that's the way we just are programmed right now. But right. we have to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. 20 pounds might sound a lot better if we're losing one pound 20 times or two pounds 10 times. We break that big goal into smaller goals and then maybe it doesn't, maybe it takes longer than a year. Maybe after that year mark, we're 18 pounds down and all we have to do next January is just tweak our goal right. and then, or uh, make it a little bit more. Maybe we're at 18, we're going to get to 30 because it's now January and we're just yeah. going to give ourselves that bump. Right. It's a lot easier to bump your goal or to tweak your goal at that year mark where we thought we needed to be complete by than it is to reestablish a new goal. Yeah. So, um, and then we don't consider it a failure when it's a month in or six months in and we're now stressed about how we're going to achieve this big lofty goal we've set in a shorter amount of time right so by setting that large goal and breaking it down into much smaller and then not pressuring ourselves to finish it in that calendar year we set ourselves up for a lot more success in goal setting yeah i agree and i i you know i do see people they are even afraid to touch the words hear the words and actually when i say touch the word i mean you know actually pursue it you know set those short-term goals and long-term goals because of the fear of failure you know, and I always say, I think, you know, if you try, there is no su such thing as failure. You know, if you, if you put your best effort forth, if you try, you know, then you should give yourself a pat on the back, you know, that, that it's not failure. If you don't really, you know, acknowledge to the point where you want it to be, you know, what's your take on that? I think it's important to celebrate as we, we, as we move forward, the, the, the big lofty goals, they need to be celebrated too. Um, but it's a lot more um, to our benefit for that every bit of dopamine we can get. If we use the weight loss example again, and we lose one pound, it may not seem like a lot, but that's a massive change towards a 20 pound goal or whatever your goal is. Right. And now that celebration isn't to go out and get a big dessert, but <laughs> you know, maybe it's an extra couple minutes of TV or maybe like whatever that transition means to you, but something that makes you feel good that 
is a celebration for that small goal. And then as you get to that next milestone, um, or, or a part of that goal that you've set, it's, it's, it's your motivation to keep going because you know, when you get to that next pound or yeah. if you're reading and you finish a book and that celebration after you finish that book to mark that on the calendar or to maybe buying the next book is, is enough celebration for you to get going. It's, it's, it's that motivation to move forward that keeps you going. And, and when you have small goals and you compound that growth by, you know, achieving that one pound every time and getting to the 20 or finishing those amount of books or walking or running a certain amount or whatever the goal is. Yeah. Every small goal that leads you there is that hit of dopamine to keep you moving along the way. And, right. then, and once you get to that big goal, because when you, when you set yourself up that way, you know, you're going to get there. Yeah. It's, it's then compounding to get to that next goal and setting that, that, smaller goals to get there. It's it's that roadmap that we talked about where you not only have you set the plan, but you're setting out your directions how to get there by these micro goals along the way. Now, do you feel like when, when you're starting to accomplish these goals, should you add to those goals, you know, or is it, do you think it's too overwhelming for a person, you know, because sometimes people might think, okay, I've got to goal number five, now I'm going to set three more goals for myself, or maybe just be satisfied with what you see on the paper and try to actually execute it and then worry about, you know, creating more goals. What do you feel like works better? I think it's important to have a list um, of goals. And, and even if it's January or your birthday or whatever important date that you want to set as your goal date, you can you can have this list of things you'd like to do um, and then pick two or three of those to work on. And then as you start to finish those goals or achieve those goals at whatever capacity they are and however long it takes you, then you have maybe the next goal set up. You can you can pick from that list and say, you know what, this is something that's important to me. I want to work on it. Right. Or as we grow, we may think we want certain things. We may feel like we, we got to lose 20 pounds and we, we do, and we just don't love how we are. We actually like eating food and want to be a certain way and really love who we were at that point and, yeah. or whatever that means, you know, we can change those goals along the way, just because we've committed to something doesn't mean that, that it works for us. We, we learn what we like and don't like. And, and if, if the goals we've set for ourselves maybe are too lofty or just aren't what we're into anymore, we can change that whenever we want. Right. It's just important to, you know, document that however it makes sense for you and then create that new path to get there. Without right. that path, we just we don't get that hit of dopamine every every time we we turn a corner or every time we we uh you know build towards that success. When without that, that's where we get to the middle of January and we decide this isn't for me anymore. I can't do it. It's not it's not uh possible. Whereas we just needed that, that bit of push to keep going. Right. And, you know, for, for people who just, you know, feel like they want to give up, what are your, what are your uh, suggestions to them to keep them, you know, rolling and, and not give up? I think, I think the biggest thing is, is just set something smaller and, and the goal, I think the goal, the term we think huge Yeah. in order, in order for it to be a goal, it has to be some massive change. Whereas uh, the goal might just be to get out of bed in the morning, mm -hmm. right? It might yeah. even not even be the morning, like, whatever we're dealing with, because we've all got things we're working on. Right. It could be just uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up before 10 o'clock. Right. And that goal to get up at 10, if I get up at 10, I'm going to do this. And then you, you've you now got it in your mind that you're going to get up and dressed and out the door, whatever version of that. And th then your reward is, maybe you get that uh, donut with your coffee or, or, you know, whatever, whatever you set for yourself, whatever is, is going to give you that motivation. Yeah. But the goal doesn't have to be massive and it's almost better that it isn't. Right. Because if we're in a position where, you know, even just setting goals is a lot and we're not in that frame of mind. Right. Big goals are never going to work. Yeah. So getting the, getting, setting those goals to get up in the morning and maybe 10 o'clock becomes nine 30 becomes nine o'clock becomes eight um setting you know the, the the expectation that this morning routine bit where you're up at four you're doing all this exercise as you're, you're drinking the smoothies you're doing the things like that's something to build towards that's that big goal we talked about yeah but maybe just setting to get up at nine or ten or whatever 
um, your schedule sounds like um, is the first step and you celebrate that you've done that and let, you know what, build on it. If that's yeah. the goal today, let's do that tomorrow. Let's do that the next day and the next day. And all of a sudden you've done that for a week. You've, you've now added 15 minutes to the time you're getting up. And then again, and you know, you just keep building on that growth. And, and when you see that, like I document all, like all this stuff on my calendar, when you start to see these, these marks on your calendar for these things you're working working on these micro goals say uh you know it's it's a lot of momentum and that's a yeah. dopamine hit in itself you see all this this growth across these many days yeah and, and weeks and and you just want to keep that rolling it's it's dopamine in itself just to see that extra check mark or extra day you've you've added to uh to what you're doing Oh, a hundred percent. And I feel like when I started accomplishing goals in my life, I felt like my self-esteem boosted, you know, and, and I started feeling really good about myself. That's when my confidence level started to go up, you know, just by goal setting and accomplishing those goals. And, and, you know, at first it was like, it wasn't big goals that I was accomplishing. It was small goals, but it made me feel so good as a person. And then I saw myself become more confident, more, you know, like, yeah, I rock, you know, and, and then I was like, you know, more apt to like want to accomplish more goals and then starting to feel good about who I was, you know, uh, because there was a period in my time where I didn't feel good of who I was and I had low self-esteem and I, I, I refused to feel like that. And I think goal setting was like a huge thing in my life that helped me, you know, between goal setting and positive thinking, I thought those two things keyed so well together and it helped me become the person I am today. Excellent. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it's important to do it and, and we can set more than one goal at a time too. Um, and, and if we break it down, they're not these massive goals while they are the end result. We think with the end in mind, we set the big goal where we'd like to work towards and we break it down. It doesn't have to be that, you know, we can only go for that walk because that, that equals whatever we're working towards the run the marathon, whatever. Yeah. But you, you can still go for that walk. You can drink that, that water, the uh, extra cup of water. You can read for the extra minutes. Like it's, it's important to have multiple things you're working on because if today you don't go for that walk yeah. because it's raining, your whatever your, your situation is, you've still done a couple of these other things that give you that extra hit that you see, you know what, I didn't do this today, but I did this and this. So I'm, right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at least achieving a portion of it. And yeah. because we're not instant, we're not thinking about it in an instant, we're working over the course of a year or, you know, a lifetime. Yeah. We, we can see that growth uh, over time, as we look back on it and say, you know what, I didn't do this every day, but because I stuck with it, I've lost that weight. I've read those books. I've done that thing. And we feel a lot better about that end result and compounding the next onto the next goal, because we've looked at it over a period of time and not given ourselves all that pressure to do it every single day. And, and even though, you know, whatever in life, because life will happen, whatever happens, yep. we continued, even though, you know, we, we ran into that obstacle. We, we got over it and, and kept on the, on the path to that goal. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think one of the things you said was really important is that, you know, you, you don't look at like the, the end, the end result It's like, you, you know, I think that that saying, take it one day at a time, it fits it so perfectly because it's just, you know, you just focus on that one day now, you know, and just work on the goals that you need to accomplish for that day. Cause I think, you know, it's good to have a law, like an idea of what you want to be or where you want to, you know, what do you want to achieve long-term, but really in order to get there, I think you have to focus on today and just you know baby steps one day at a time you know what's your take on that yeah that that's important it's it's probably the best starting place is is the one day at a time or even one moment at a time yeah you know, uh, thinking about what you're doing this evening is this the start or you know tomorrow morning and just kind of see from there um yeah. setting that that goal uh, of doing it at a certain point uh one day at a time is is probably the only way to start because it, it it almost makes it even more if you're going to do this every day for a week. Right. You know, let's let's not worry about the week. Yeah. Let's just worry about right now. 
And I think that's where, you know, people get like anxious and they get anxiety is because they they're starting to think about like the future and then they're starting to worry. Well, what if I, you know, what if I don't accomplish that? What if I don't get to that point? You know, will this happen? Will that happen? And then all of a sudden they're so anxious and they, they've gotten so to the point where I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, and then they and then they end up not doing it at all. You know, so like you said, I think one moment at a time fits it perfectly. Yeah, and when it's not a lot of pressure, we'll we'll, we'll continue with it. If we we think we have to do it, whatever it is, um, uh, to get to that hundred pounds lost, or um, you know, we think about that big goal, we're we're gonna we're gonna quit. Yeah, we can't. It's easy for us. I did it. We all do it. It's just it's easy to tell ourselves we can't because it's hard. Yeah, when it's hard because it should be but, and it'll be worth it. But at the same time, it, it's, it's hard because it's different Yeah, and it's, and, and it's different because it's just, we're not used to doing it. And that's what got us to the point of needing to do that thing. Like lose that weight or, or, you know, come out of that funk. Yeah. I think like the, one of the worst things we, we tend to be our own enemy because we make excuses for ourselves, you know, and that's what, that's what pulls us back from, you know, achieving those those goals that we set for ourselves is that we give ourselves excuses yeah it's it's so much it's so easy to, to to excuse things and i've started to try and it's it's a mindful thing uh mindfulness thing you, you i've started to try and catch myself yeah um, over the last couple of years it's it's i've started to really process the things i've been excusing the things i'm yeah. telling myself the reasons i'm giving myself and others and and just changing you know if if it's something i i show i wasn't doing and uh like oh i'm busy uh, busy is is probably the biggest excuse we we give and it's oh my god yeah it's 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 not even in just an excuse so well, how was your day busy it's like well <laughs> it doesn't describe anything everybody's busy we're all busy yeah so like to use that as it's almost a cop-out because it, okay sure it was busy well how was it though you know it's it's like that one excuse to not answer the question or to not do something because you were busy. It's like, well, if you wanted to do it, then you would, you would have done it. You would have found a way. There's, right. there's things that, that, you know, yes, we're all busy, but if you, if you wanted to go to that concert, that whatever, you would find a way to make it work. Exactly. Exactly. And and I hear that from so many people, they make excuses, but if you really want to do something, if you really want to do something, there's always a way, there's always a, a way to find how to do it, you know? And, and, you know, that's the biggest thing is people make excuses because they want to justify it. But really, it, you know, if you really want something so bad, you, you will find a way to make it happen. You know, it's just yeah. wanting it, I think, you know, really yeah. wanting it, what's important to you. And the, and the fine line with excuses is it might sound like an excuse to somebody, but it, it goes with things you don't want too, yeah. right? And and if if that the self care and and rest is is what you need in that moment, then it's not an excuse that you don't want to go out because of yeah. that or because whatever. It's it's like the fine line with an excuse is is what that means to you. Is is it? Are you saying that because that's really what you want? Or is it, are you saying that because it's just your way to not have to do something about what you, uh, what your goals are, or what you want to work on? Right. Exactly. You only, you know, if it's an excuse, Yeah, you know, I'm busy, maybe you're busy, but are you busy because you don't want to do that? You don't want to go to the gym. You don't want to like whatever you're working on. It's, it's not a good, uh, it's not a good excuse. It's not a good way to to talk about your your day. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think when you approach someone like that, you know, that person will probably their mouth will drop because they, you know, you kind of pretty much got them, you know, when when you say it like that, you know, they they realize that hey, I'm not, I can't get it over that person, you know, that my my excuses aren't going to work because they 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 see, you know, why I'm making those excuses, you know. Um, it's it's it was a biggest, it was a big one for me, like to try and be mindful of, of the things I was saying and excusing and, and, and the reasons I was giving, it's like, you know, did I think that was going to work? Did I think they were going to buy that? Like, <laughs> did I buy that? Like, I, I just, it's a matter of acknowledging at the moment and catching, like I was catching myself saying different excuses for things and, yeah. and then just realizing that it wasn't productive. It wasn't 
right. that helped me change my attitude and my mindset about the things I was trying to work on. It was just keeping me in a place so until I was ready to get out of that place and, and to change that mindset and stop using those excuses and set those goals. Was I, was I really ready for the kind of growth that I was hoping for? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you had to give some takeaways from what we discussed, how can you help people? Like, you know, if they want to start really creating constructive goals and really stick to them, everything we just discussed today, like how could you sum that up and make it easy for someone to like really start, you know, and, and if they fell back on their, on their goals, how could they get back on track and, 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 you know, kind of continue where they left off? Because you know what, we all fall back on it. You know, people shouldn't punish themselves or feel guilty or feel bad or shameful because we all do it. We're human, you know, but how do you get back on track or, and, or how do you even start, you know, like how, how would you sum it up and give some really great takeaways? Okay. I think uh, when you, when you get started, let's, let's write a few goals down. Um, I don't want to tell you to fill the page because that's a lot of pressure, but just, <laughs> just brain down, just write down as whatever goals you can think of, whatever goals are important to you. If it's what you saw on TV last night, if it's what you feel in the moment, write them down and pick your top three, pick your top three. And then from that three, just choose one. Let's start with one. So you've got a couple in mind. You choose that first one. And how can you break that goal down? So you choose that one. Let's say you just want to walk more. It's a basic yeah. goal. You want to go for walks more. You like the, the weather or the, uh, you know, the environment. You want to walk more. Well, how can you do that? Right. Uh, I can set distance goals. Okay. You can say, I want to walk more. What's that mean? Okay. It goes around the block. Um, maybe that's a mile. So you want right. to walk a mile. Um, that's a lot in the beginning too. So maybe let's break that down to let's just walk for five minutes. Right. So five, five minutes is a starting point. Let's back up a bit from that. Let's just put our shoes on. I, I started posting about this, uh, but if if you want to go for that walk, you want to exercise, the hardest part is just putting the clothes on to do that exercise. So let's worry about just getting dressed. Let's worry about doing that. So yeah. the best thing that, that I did was I'd set my clothes out. The, the stuff that when I was trying to get up in the morning and do you know a bit of walking, a bit of exercise in the morning, right. um, aside from you know, the goal of setting your alarm and getting up earlier, that's different. But for now I set my clothes out. So when I got up in the morning, everything was ready. It was right there. I was, uh, then I was putting the clothes on and the easiest thing was after what well, the hardest part was getting the clothes on. It was putting right. the shoes on, it was getting ready. So set that goal to go for that walk and then determine how long and make sure your stuff's ready. And when you put that stuff on, you're already ready to go. Don't worry about the, the five minutes or the mile. Just just putting that stuff on. That's enough to celebrate for the for the day. That's oh, enough to, sure. to 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 give you that mark on the calendar that 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 excitement that you you did it, and it'll get to a point. And James Clear talks about this in Atomic Habits. But just putting that stuff on, you drive to the gym. Don't even go inside. Just drive there, and then the next week you're walking in the door, and then you're leaving, and just you'll build up that goal by achieving those small steps and working towards a bigger picture and so that so that's a good way to get started and if if you fall off if you stop doing it let's find out why you stop doing it is it because it's outside and it's winter and snowy or it's rainy or it's whatever it, it is where you are right um so maybe outside's not the answer um is it because you don't have equipment so inside's really not the answer either yeah um and then you you start to break down what you can do maybe maybe the walk thing is what you do on the nice days and maybe your your other goal is to just do a sit up or to do different different inside exercises that you don't need equipment for right whatever whatever your comfort level your 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 level of uh you know physical health can can handle it's it's taking those goals and making it that you've got different contingencies in place that that will help you get through when an obstacle gets in your way because obstacles right. will get in your way yes and maybe the goal was just too lofty maybe you thought you broke it down uh to uh, it's in a smaller spot but five minutes was just too much you just needed to to put the clothes on you just needed to get ready and mm -hmm. that was breaking it down so um, you know, set the small goals, 
but uh, give yourself, give yourself a contingency, give yourself a backup because right. things will happen and to have something else that will still give you that, that dopamine hit and still put you forward on that direction uh, is, is something that uh, is, is important. Oh, I love it. I love it. These are great takeaways. You know, I, I really thank you for coming on the show. Now, before we go, I want you to tell everybody the services that you do. So people are aware of all the different things that you do and tell them where they can find you. And also I want you to tell them where they can get that amazing blog because you have some amazing articles posted on that blog. Uh, thank you. So everything, uh, is based on my website, seanrobinson.ca. I've got uh, all my podcast links are in my media section, um, radio interviews. Uh, I've got a blog section. So every, every at least every once a month, I try to, to put out a new blog. And I uh, just, just the other day, put one out about late January goals. So it fits perfectly for what, what we're talking about. And uh, I've got TikTok accounts and YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everything's linked through my website. Everything is uh, Sean Robinson or at Going Dry. I love it. This has been amazing because I think this is something that we all need because like we were talking about in the beginning, you know, what? a lot of people, we all make those resolutions and sometimes some people don't even do it and some people fall off track. And you know what? Goal setting is a powerful tool, just like you had mentioned. And you know what? I think it's so important. You know, don't get discouraged, guys, if you if you didn't make your resolutions or if you didn't keep them, because it is the beginning of the year. And and just like Sean said, you have all year that you could start at any time of the year, you know, and just, you know, start or get back on track. And these are amazing tips that you provided throughout the entire podcast. I think, you know, people should really consider, you know, focusing on goal setting and, and, and do it the way you show them because it works, it works. And I can say, you know, I, I do a lot of the things that you had suggested and it works, it, it does help. And, you know, you, you know, both you and I are, are, you know, true, you know, I guess, uh, you know, uh, examples of, of, you know, goal setting because, uh, you know, I, I, I believe in everything you, you say, and I, I do everything you say and it works. It makes it could make a humongous change in your life. I agree. Thank you. And, uh, something to add is, is it's very important to follow. I suggest following people that are in that space and they're doing yeah. the things you want to do because they're already paving the way by showing you the right way to do things or different things to do. But it's important to, to not try and keep up with whoever you're following, whatever accounts you're following, whatever they're, because it can be a lot of pressure to think that you, sh you can be that, that way today. We're talking about right. patience. We're talking about instant gratification. But that can be the, the big goal is to work towards the things you follow, the people you follow. Yes. But but don't give yourself the pressure that that's what's going to happen today. That can be, you know, this this year, next year. And, and, and on that note, too, it's it's don't think that that New Year's resolution, if you make them, let's let's keep on that train because that's good goal setting. But it doesn't have to happen this year. That's a big thing. That goal can can be tweaked by next year can be modified yeah. but if you do that um, every year you're just modifying stuff you're already working on it's a lot less pressure and a lot more possible Oh, a hundred percent. That's a great note of advice. And, you know, I, I reminded me when you said that, you know, I, you know, when you, when you put yourself around people that think like you, it's positive energy and, and you kind of reinforce that positive energy in, in one big circle and, and you kind of boost each other to, to get to that one specific, you know, uh, way of, of living. And, you know, and, and I remember like when I first started, I had a friend who was already uh, doing it for about 15 years, you know, really, you know, uh, focusing on improving themselves and changing their lives. And I was like, oh, you know, I get frustrated because I wanted to be where they were at. And they're like, Stacy, you are on your way. But I have I I'm on level 33 and you have just started. You can't compare yourself to others. You go. You know, that what's the worst thing that we do as humans, we compare ourselves, but we don't know how long that person's been practicing, you know, certain things or doing certain things. So we're all at different levels. So we can't compare ourselves. We could just work on our own selves and go at our speed because when we go at mm -hmm. our speed, I think that's when good things happen. Yeah, we can't, and we can't skip levels either. Uh, you yeah. know, some, some levels might take us longer than the next person. And while yeah. we're not, we're, while we're not comparing it's, it's, 
every step is going to take as long as it takes for you and and the next person the next step might be the hard one for them right so yeah we may we may all and hopefully I'll get to the same place in the end that we want to be right we can't compare to others and we just have to give ourselves the credit that that we're working on it and and the best way to 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 do it is is to give yourself that year if you start in January or you start whenever if you give yourself that goal that I'm going to do this for this amount of time no matter what when you look back if that's been three months you will notice a difference after three months you oh. will see that the person you were three months ago and the growth you've done is so much different already. And yeah. that that in itself will give you so much more confidence to keep going because what's three more months going to look like or six months or three years? Like mm -hmm. you can you consistently stay on that track and keep going out of those small pieces and small intervals of time and compound that way. Like you look back and it, you're going to be amazed at the results. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. That is great advice. Oh my God. That is great advice. Before we go, one more time, tell everybody your website because I want the whole world to go to your website because you have some amazing stuff on there. Uh, it's seanrobinson.ca, S-E-A-N-R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. And uh, there's a contact me page. If uh, if anybody wants to get a hold of me direct, just uh, send me a message on there and it'll go straight to me. I manage all my content and uh, I'd be glad to hear from you. All right. Thank you so much, Sean, for taking the time to come here and to talk about goal setting. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you as a person. I appreciate everything you do. And you are just an amazing person overall. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Stacey. I appreciate it. All right. You have a great day. You too. Thank you very much.